This video is supported by a -Main Hobbies. Click the links in the description below. Well, since the last video I did on the subject went so well, it would seem that doing another video in this sort of style would be warranted. In the world of A-scale racing is dominated by two main chassis types, that being buggy and truggy. These two chassis types have dominated the world of A-scale racing for a long time at this point, and both have a deep history as to where they came from and how they've evolved over the years. In this video, we're going to be going over said history for each class, and we'll be comparing the two to see which one is for you. Before we begin, I'd like to go over a few things first. First off, I'd like to remind you that this channel is supported by a -Main Hobbies. Anything you guys purchase using the links in the description below will directly support me as well. Secondly, if you're new here, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Any way you guys engage with my videos greatly helps my channel grow. With that out of the way, let's get started. A-scale buggies, specifically nitro buggies, are by far the most prestigious class you can get into as a racer. If you want all the glory for winning, this is the class you go for. As for where they came from, you need to go back to the 1980s with Kyosho Vanning 8-scale buggy. Prior to the Vanning, most A-scale off-road cars were basically pan cars on stilts and you can sort of figure out the results of that design. The Vanning was a step in the right direction but it still wasn't quite there in terms of performance with this tubular type of chassis giving it a high center of gravity and making maintenance a major pain. This was also the case of the later Landjump and Presto buggies. As a result, Kyosho would basically go back to the drawing board and kind of abandon A-scale fuel cars for a while before they had to hit a breakthrough with their main designer even to this day, Yuichi Kanai. The design he made at the time in the form of the Burns was a revolutionary for the time in 1987. See if you can spot anything familiar in today's buggies. Cheap yet durable and reliable injection molded plastics, combined with metal elements where necessary for strength, an aluminum pan chassis instead of a tubular cage, a shaft driven four wheel drive system with an adjustable center differential instead of a chain drive configuration, four wheel fully independent wishbone type suspension, a mid mounted engine, single radio trays which held all the electrical components and can be switched out as one unit, and a Lexan body. The Burns was arguably the first modern 8-scale buggy ever made, and one that pretty much every 8-scale buggy to this day emulates to some degree, as this layout has been found on pretty much every successful 8-scale nitro buggy ever since. Later on, with the advent of brushless systems and such, people began running said brushless systems in homemade e-buggy conversions. Even companies like Techno would be spawned from this trend as the LiPo and brushless systems began to get more popular, as did the popularity of e-buggy. Okay. Now that we've got a very brief history of A-scale buggies out of the way, why don't we talk about how they drive and their benefits compared to the other class I'll get to later. Buggies and e-buggies, like I mentioned before, are the premier classes for their respective propulsion systems. This is because buggies by nature, much like their 10-scale counterparts, are quick and tricky to drive sometimes. If you want to get good quickly and want all the glory that comes with winning a prestigious class, buggies are for you. Another benefit that buggies have over truggies is that by and large they tend to be cheaper than their truggy counterparts for the most part, both in the price of kits and in spare parts like arms, drive shafts, wheels, and tires. Also, this point may be debatable, but buggies tend to survive more abuse compared to truggies entirely based on their shorter arms reducing the amount of leverage in a crash. Another benefit that buggies have in the world of RC is the fact that they aren't really going anywhere in terms of popularity. Ever since they popped up in the late 80s, Buggy has been THE staple RC racing class for a long time, even when RC as a whole was struggling, and as a result, you aren't going to show up to an art outdoor RC track and not be able to run due to lack of entries for Buggy. Unfortunately, now we have to get into the bad stuff, and it starts with driving a Buggy in the first place. Buggies, like I said before, are tricky to drive compared to Truggies. If your setup is off or you're just having a bad driving day, 
things can seem like an upward battle in terms of trying to do better. Also, remember when I said that buggies are cheaper than truggies? Well, that only goes for getting them up and running, specifically when it comes to tires. Even though buggy tires are cheaper than truggy tires, they tend to wear out faster than truggy tires and as a result you're going to end up having to spend more on them in the long run. Don't, uh, don't tell my dad how much I spent on tires. It hurts my soul. The last thing that needs to be said about buggies as a whole is that they haven't really changed a lot since Kanai came out with the burns 30 odd years ago. They've allowed that formula for all of that time and haven't really changed much since then. Whether or not you consider this a good or a bad thing is up to you, however it is worth mentioning. All in all, Buggy is a very competitive class with a lot to offer a driver in terms of teaching you how to get good, but will frustrate you if you can't figure stuff out. With that being said, let's get into Truggy. Truggies as we know them today haven't been around for too long compared to buggies. Explaining where they entered into the spotlight is about as convoluted and tricky as answering what the first muscle car was. You're never going to get it right. The best explanation I could find was on an RC tech forum by a guy named Car Crusher 46 with this explanation. There had been plenty of buggy based monster truck conversions, the Kyosho USA-1, Nitro Crusher, and the Ofta Monster Pirate. But the first racing based Truggy title would probably have to go to the GS Racing in their Storm Unlimited Truck, or SUT. The monster truck class was raging nationwide, and everyone was looking for a performance advantage over the T Maxes and Savages everyone was running. So, GS put a few tweaks on their Storm Buggy platform, added max sized tires and slender truck style body, and poof, now you had the open monster truck class. This eventually led to the split of the class into the Truggy, vehicles with a center diff and direct driver line and production monster trucks, trucks like the Savages and T-Maxes with multi-gear transmissions and non-plate style chassis. Eventually, the production monster truck class died, whereas the Truggy class lived on. So, what exactly is a Truggy anyway, and how do they tend to drive compared to buggies? Well, to put it in simplest terms, a Truggy is by and large an enlarged buggy in every sense of the word. They are longer, wider, and heavier than buggies with truck buddies on them. Make sense? Good. With that being said, you should probably already have a good idea as to how these things handle compared to their buggy counterparts. Think the difference between a buggy and a truggy like the difference between a two-wheel drive 10th scale buggy and a two-wheel drive stadium truck. The stadium truck, or truggy in this case, is easier to drive in almost every way, but the buggy is faster and a bigger test of the extent of your driving skill. This leads me to the number one benefit of truggies as a whole, and that's their ease of use. Even though the price of getting a Truggy up and running is a tad bit higher than on the buggy on average, a point I'll get to later, there isn't a whole lot that goes into making a Truggy work on most tracks. You can pretty much run the stock setup on most Truggies and be done with it from there from track to track. Not only that, but like I said before, Truggies are very easy to drive compared to buggies as their basic design is better suited to rougher tracks with larger jumps. Another thing going in trucks or Truggies favor is the fact that the tires you tend to run on them last a lot longer than buggy tires do for the most of the time. So if you're looking to save money in the long run, that's the one you should go for. With all that being said, truggies aren't perfect and there are some downsides to running them over a buggy. One small point I like I said before is the fact that they tend to be a little bit more expensive to get up and running than buggies usually are. A good example would be the fact that you need a stronger motor to move these bigger tires without being bogged down, both in the nitro and electric spaces, and these stronger motors usually cost more money than weaker ones that would just work fine on a buggy. There's also the question of popularity outside of the US. Yes, I am aware that e-truggy is growing in the US like wildfire, and they tend to do pretty well at most different tracks around the country. Hell, this whole continent. Outside of the country, however, truggy isn't very popular for the most part. This is for a few reasons, such as a lack of really rutted and bumpy tracks for 8th scale at a top level, and just plain old lack of interest from our friends across the pond. The same can also be said for those on the other side of the Pacific. So, if you happen to live in either of those places, chances are the choice has already been made for you. There's also the problem of them promoting bad driving habits. To put it simply, 
There's a lot of stuff that you can get away with in a truggy that you can't really in a buggy. Again, think the difference between a stadium truck and a two wheel drive buggy in 10 scale. The last and biggest issue that lots of people have with truggy class as a whole is an identity crisis. Now, some of you may have been looking at the footage in the background and have said, well, why don't you use truggy footage when you're talking about truggies? Well, to put it plainly, I have. I won't get too much into this debate as it honestly warrants its own discussion. However, to give you the bluff notes, one of the downsides truggies had before these new bruggy bodies around was the fact that they parachuted over large jumps. And in A scale, this was an issue. To remedy this issue, Techno released a new body style to sort of combat this with their ET48 2.0, with a two-piece set that left the front shock tower exposed, unlike previous bodies that went over it. Even with this design, it still looked like a truck for the most part with its boxy styling. Well, when this happened, other manufacturers began to develop their, on their own body styles that emulated their two-piece body design. The only real difference is the fact that they didn't really care about making it look like a truck anymore and just chased pure performance. I'm not going to get into my own personal opinion on this particular topic, as I probably lose some friends. What I will say is that it kind of took away from what made truggies more unique in terms of looks and looks only. These days, truggies are rarely even called truckies anymore. They're called bruggies or 7th scale buggies, and to be honest, I can see why. With that being said, I'd like to hear what you have to say. Bruggy or truggy? Put it in the comments below. So why exactly would you buy one over the other? Well, like I said before, if you wanted to get into the most popular and highest number of drivers with the most bragging rights if you win along with the slightly cheaper hardware, the buggy class is for you. If you're looking at something that will drive better out of the box with minimal tuning, isn't as competitive right out of the gate, and you happen to live in the United States, Truggy is probably the better fit for you. In the end though, I do believe that both are classes that are worth having if just for variety's sake. Both have their merits, and both are fun to take part in. I just hope I gave you a better idea of which one you should pick based on each of their classes' merits and disadvantages. And that's all for now. If you liked this video, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more. Also, if you stuck around for this long, I have a surprise for you. If you like a custom painted SCT body, I'll be doing a waffle with this PayPal on screen right here. If you'd like to enter, all you need to do is send $5 to this PayPal account and you'll be entered into the raffle. Every $5 is one entry. I'll also be picking the winners on the 31st of August, so if you want to get in early, now's your chance. If you're just listening, the email is roachrc1 at gmail.com. Also, if you'd like to see updates and teasers as to when my next videos are going to be coming out, feel free to check out my Patreon as well. Speaking of which, I'd like to thank my patrons Michael Williams, Casey Nix, Ben Reeves, Dave Armstrong, Joe Jenkins, Rob Beddingfield, RC World Discord Server, Caden Merks, Ian Petrie, Keith McDonald, Spiro Harvey, Lo Logan Judkins, and especially, Morrison Watt. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.